Hi, Dan. Hi, Anita. <laughs> Hello, everyone, to you watching out there. My name is Ednita Kelly, and I'm the children's librarian from the San Pedro branch of the Los Angeles Public Library. And I'm joined today by my colleague, Diane Olivo Posner, principal librarian for the Exploration and Creativity Department of the Los Angeles Public Library. Well, it's our pleasure to welcome you today to um, the Your Author series. And today we're going to be featuring Tracy Baptiste, who will be discussing her middle grade series, The Jumbies, a scary but cheerful tale that draws on Caribbean folk tradition. Thanks, Anita. Yeah, she's holding up the book. Woo. <laughs> Please feel free to use the chat box to send in your questions and comments, and they'll be answered toward the end of the program. Also, don't forget to email ecdept at lapl.org for your chance to be entered into an opportunity drawing to win a copy of the Jumbies. Awesome. And of course, we want to thank our generous donors, the Lenore S. and Bernard A. Greenberg Fund, as well as the Library Foundation and our amazing behind the scenes staff for helping the library bring these author and illustrator programs to you virtually. Thank you all so very much. We would also like to recognize and acknowledge the first people of this land. We recognize and acknowledge their elders, past and present, as well as their descendants. For information on which territory you may reside on, check out native-land.ca. Perfect. All right, guys. In today's Your Author program, local author Tracy Batiste will be discussing her latest work, The Jumbies. Corinne Lemaire claims she isn't afraid of anything, not scorpions, not the boys who tease her, and certainly not jumbies. They're just tricksters made up by parents to frighten their children. Then one night, Corinne chases an agouti all the way into the forbidden forest and shining yellow eyes follow her to the edge of the trees. They couldn't belong to a jumbie, or could they? And now for what we have all been waiting for, let's welcome Tracy. Hello. Hi, 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 hi. Thank you so much for having me. Hi, Tracy. I love how we said you were local because you're local <laughs> in the United States. <laughs> but Tracy, right. where are you true. coming from? It's true. Tracy's uh, back east. So, um, you know, not in California, but she's local in our hearts. <laughs> Online, we are all local. <laughs> <laughs> so there is that. <laughs> so, so um, will you go ahead? Okay. Well, I was just going to ask um, before you get started with um, your talk, will you read us a bit about the Jumbies? Yeah, jumbies? absolutely. I'm happy to. So, um, you did such a great description of it. And I'm actually going to read like a little bit of that part that sort of like gets you into the story. So this is going to be a little bit from chapter one, um, which is called The Forest. Corinne Lemaire's heart beat like wild drums as she ran through the forest. Her bare feet stumbled over the dead leaves and protruding roots of the forest floor. She strained her eyes in the dappled sunlight to keep track of the small furry agouti that scampered away from her. Occasionally, light glinted off the smooth rock tied to the animal's hind leg. It called to Corinne like a beacon. When she got close enough, she pounced on the agouti and missed, grabbing only a handful of dirt. Corinne grunted and threw the dirt aside. The animal ran beneath a bush and Corinne squeezed down to the damp earth to crawl after it. Her skirt got caught on branches, but she ripped it away, determined to reach the animal. On the other side, the creature cowered against a rock in the roots of a large tree. In her 11 years of life, Corinne had learned that with nowhere to run, a wild animal might try to attack. She hung back. I'm not going to hurt you, she said in her calmest voice. She eased closer. I just need that thing on your leg. You'll be able to run much faster without it, and I won't be chasing you. So she moved with care toward the gooty and gently untied the silk cord. The animal's coarse fur shivered, and its pulse beat as fast as her own. 
Corinne closed her fist firmly around the stone pendant and crawled back out of the bush. She rubbed the stone with her thumb. Over years of constant handling, she had worn a smooth groove that fit her finger perfectly. The pendant had been her mama's, and when she put her thumb into the little hollow, she imagined her mama's hand around her own. Corinne breathed a sigh of relief now that it was back in her possession, but her relief did not last long. She didn't know this part of the forest, and it was darker here. The branches of the mahogany trees were so thick that barely any light came through. It even smelled different of wood and wet earth, while Corinne was used to the smell of the sea. She had no idea which way was out. Somewhere between the leaves, Corinne thought she saw a pair of lights shining. They were close together, like eyes. Her skin prickled, but then the lights disappeared, and Corinne tried to shake off her fear. The little bit of light must have been reflecting on something. Don't be silly, she scolded herself. I'm going to kill those boys, she muttered into the heavy air. A pair of yellow-bellied birds alighted on a branch overhead and called out, Kiskadi, Kiskadi. Something small scratched through the undergrowth. A cold lump formed in Corinne's stomach and began to spread. She had heard grown-ups tell stories about the terrible things that lived in hidden pockets of the island, like this forest filled with ancient mahogany trees. They talked about creatures with backward feet and women who could shed their skin and women with hooves for feet. Even though her papa told her these stories were not true, there must have been a reason no one ever came this far into the forest. Corinne felt the wind at her left cheek. She followed it as her papa had taught her to do. After a few minutes, the trees thinned out. There was a bit more sunlight filtering through the branches. Corinne breathed easier. Her heart slowed its pace, but she continued to hurry over the uneven ground, ducking beneath trees as she went. Then, behind her, the bushes rustled. She turned just in time to see something move in the shadows. Surely, it was only an animal, but what if it was another kind of thing entirely? The kind of thing from the grown-ups' stories, a jumbie. The hairs on her arms stood on end. She gripped her mama's necklace as she glanced behind her. From a curtain of shadow, two large yellow eyes blinked. Corinne turned and ran as fast as she could. The thing snarled and rushed after her. Corinne concentrated on the ground as she fled. She burst through the last line of trees into the dirt road. A large pair of hands grabbed her. Corinne squeezed her eyes shut. And I'm going to stop there. <laughs> okay, I can breathe. <laughs> it's so scary. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. I know. It's a little scary. It's true. But it does get better from there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I am, yeah, we'll, like we'll talk real, about that. Um, yeah, it gets in the questions. Because I have questions. You're, like, you're, you're right at a precipice, but you it's not actually a precipice. It's right, a little bit of right. a fake out. I do that a lot in this book. <laughs> and that's have, just chapter one. <laughs> mm -hmm. I have so many questions that we'll get to later, but as you're reading that now, because you read that um, with such suspense and fright, um, did you love horror stories when you were a kid? I did. Um, mm. I mean, I, you know, the thing is, like, I didn't love, it wasn't so much that I loved horror. I loved fairy tales, and fairy tales mm. tend to be a little bit on the scarier side. You know, there's magic and there's mayhem. <laughs> Um, you know, there's a lot of things that are happening that are like not great. And, you know, like a lot of hoping for, for better things. Um, so, you know, this was very much written in that kind of tradition. Um, but, but I, you know, like, I, I grew up listening to stories about jumbies, and like, thinking that anybody I saw on the street could possibly be a jumbie. Like, that's, that's just like was in the air in Trinidad all the time. So, um, 
like we, you would see somebody walking down the street in, you know, in the evening and my parents would be, oh, like, careful, that could be a sukuya. Like, you don't know, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's that's kind of the atmosphere I grew up in. So I don't think it's really surprising to anyone that I, I grew up and started writing stories like this. <laughs> Your other books are different. <laughs> Your other books are not horror. Yeah, yeah, they're not. They're not yeah. all. They're not all scary. Yeah. Like I have, um, <laughs> like African icons. Like this one uh -huh. is. Um, it's not a fiction. It's you know, like it's it's completely all true stories, none scary. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, depending on <laughs> like the Egyptians yeah. were a little scary. So <laughs> there's that. Well, tell us about, um, I know African Icons is your latest work, right? It's um, not my last um, one, but it, it is um, the last middle grade that I had come out. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, and maybe... that one. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say, maybe you could tell us about some of the projects that you've worked on recently. And then maybe, um, what, you know, if you could show us around sure. a little bit of your workspace. <laughs> Yeah, sure. So I have, I also have like a little surprise because I just got an um, F and G's for a new book that's coming out next year that I can share with you guys. So, um, so I do uh, like, I, I'm going to show you around my office actually, um, because you'll get a sense of like the kind of completely scatterbrained nature of my life. Right. <laughs> so, so you are <laughs> in my office. Welcome to my office. Um, so usually, so there's this chair behind me. Usually there's a dog in that chair. That is my dog, Barkley. He actually just moved out of the, the office, which, you know, that's good because he can get loud. So, but we have like these great windows, um, over here and there's another one over here where he like, you know, surveys the world, um, for most of the day. Like, you know, so he, he has, uh, he's in charge of both of the windows because he is in charge of, I guess, security. I'm not really sure. Um, <laughs> he's definitely in charge of telling me when people are approaching the door. So there's right. that. Um, I have some plants. So um, up there, that is Phil, Philomena. Um, she lives in the window. And um, there is my bookshelf. My bookshelf has a lot of Legos. I, I like to build Legos. It's like a super fun thing for me to do when I'm trying to decompress or just, you know, have some fun. I build Legos. I build a lot of Lego buildings. So you'll see that there's a lot of Lego buildings in my shelf, right? And um, some other toys that you see. Uh, Rex is down there from Toy Story. He's one of my favorites. Oh, I see. Um, I have like a lot of artwork in my office as well. A lot of them are on this wall. So it's like, it's going to mm -hmm. be hard for, you, for me to like flip the whole computer around for you to see it but trust that there are one two three four five six seven eight pieces of artwork like in front of me on my wall um most of them original art from artists that i really really love here's one i can show you this is a nesting doll from vanessa brantley newton um, who's one of my favorite illustrators and also one of my favorite people in the world um, she makes these great nesting dolls so see there's like so another cool. one in there and there's they're you know they're playing they go all the way down to like super super tiny <laughs> so i have these nesting dolls by finessa um so cool. and then so here's where like the sort of crazy part of my life comes in i'm gonna move this over here i just love that all the legos so are like see. um buildings and structures I, and, you know yeah i mean it looks well, like because i'm building San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, like I'm building a whole city, right? And I have people, like there's people populating it. And like occasionally wow. the people do things. Um, like sometimes <laughs> they have costume parties and sometimes they're like just like walk the dog or whatever. But the people do things. So, um, but over here mm. is actually like a working wall. So that is actually a book that I am currently working on. So this is this is the entire plot of a novel that I'm working on right now. Wow. Um, so every day when I come to, to this, I will like, I will take like this index card. This is actually the index card I'm working on today. Um, so it's like, like my notes for an entire chapter wow. and I will pull it down 
so that I can sort of, you know, focus on that particular chapter and what it is I want to do. So each of those index cards is notes for a chapter. And so I'll pull those down, you know, one by one and work on the chapter. Then over here, this pink thing, wait, hold on, let me move this light out of the way. This pink thing is actually a chart of all of the projects that I'm working on right now. Um, you can tell I work on a lot of projects. Lot. So each one of those um, rows is a different project. And the X's tell you how far I am in the process for wow. that particular project. Um, so, you know, so this is kind of like how I manage my life <laughs> right now. This is really mm -hmm. very much my, my office is very much an indicator of like what my writer's life is like. Um, you know, it's filled with a lot of fun stuff <laughs> for sure. Mm -hmm. Cause I like to surround myself with like a lot of super fun stuff, uh, filled with a lot of living things, you know, the dog, the plants and, and whatnot. I've, I've many more plants than, than this one. Um, and filled with, you know, the kind like sort of focused on the work that I'm working on, like right now and focused on like all of the various other projects. The reason that there are those little black tabs on um, on each of the titles is because it helps me to not get overwhelmed. Because I work on so many different projects, um, keeping the black um, label on top of it helps me to um, not think about things that don't need to be in my head right now. So when I actually like, I come in in the morning and I decide, okay, well, I'm working on this particular novel, I'll take that black tab off so that that's the thing that I am seeing, that's the thing that I'm working on. Um, I didn't do it this morning, that's the only reason <laughs> that it's it's still covered, like I forgot to do it. But that's kind of like how I manage being able to work on a bunch of different things at a time. Because I might get an email that says, hey, we need you to um, go in and do copy edits for this particular book. And in, in which case I need to sort of close off whatever I have on my desk and open up something else. Um, so I will put the tab back on, you know, like whatever project I was working on, sort of close it in my mind and take the tab off of the other thing so that I know that's the thing that I'm working on, um, especially if it like goes overnight, right? So, um, so, so as I mentioned, African Icons was one of the books that I had come out recently. It came out last October. Um, and this one is, it is all, it's all nonfiction. So it's about um, 10 people in African history, 10 people who had a really huge impact, not just on African history, but on world history as well. And it took me quite a long time to work on this, to do the research for it, but one of the things that I loved about it is that, um, you know, I was able to like sort of get into the lives of each of these people and Hillary Wilson, the illustrator did these amazing illustrations of each of the icons, but also we were able to get in like amazing maps and, and things like that. So, you know, that is one of the things that I had been working on. That is no longer on the chart because that's a book that I have, you know, finished. So here's here's one of the maps that I, I absolutely adore. It's like the true size of Africa. So it shows like how big Africa this is. This is the United States. So the United States fits wow. into Africa only here. Wow. So you can like really kind of get a sense oh, of like cool. just wow. how right. continent is. That's awesome. Right? I know. <laughs> so um yeah so i'd like i will go on um you know so like yeah so i'll go to the you know the chart figure out what it is i'm going to be working on um you know then look at whatever novel i have that's like in my you know like novel space where i plot things out i don't do picture books like that so this one mm -hmm. is um because pe so many people loved the jumpies um, and there were like younger people who like were really interested in jumpies. Even though they're super scary. Like I was <laughs> asked to write like a, a tiny person version of of the jumpies, and that's what this one is. Um, looking for a jumpy, and it's uh, it's definitely not 
as scary um, for, you know, for, for various reasons, because it's like really, really tiny people. But um, it does sort of acknowledge that jumbies are scary. So like on one of the very first spreads, you know, you have Naya, who's the main character, and she's like, she sneaks out of her, her house in the middle of the night, and she's like, I'm looking for a jumbie, I'm going to find a scary one. So she knows that they're scary, but she's still going out to like look for them anyway. Um, so that is that is yet another project. And finally, what I'll show you is an upcoming project um, that I recently got FNGs for, which is Mermaid and Pirate. Ooh. So this one comes out in April next year, um, nice. another picture book. Um, and I'm super, super <laughs> excited about this one because it was like, one of those stories that just kind of came to me like really quickly which is not usually how i work at all <laughs> um but yeah here's mermaid and pirate mermaid and pirate do not speak the same language um huh. he speaks you know like human language and she speaks mermaid. human pirate <laughs> <laughs> R. And uh, yeah exactly that's exactly what he says he says R. <laughs> <laughs> And they do, they're like, I'm trilingual. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's bad news because, like, they get into some scrapes and they don't speak the same language. So they got to, like, you know, mm. figure it out. <laughs> so, wow. um, so, so, yeah, fun. super excited about that one. So, that's like that. sort of an idea of mm -hmm. like kind of how many projects I kind of work on and how I manage it. And, a taste of a couple of them. Were, were you always this organized? I mean, I'm like, Anita, I need that. That's chart. what I want to know. <laughs> Making you that chart. Yeah. It's like, that is so great that it was, you know, so it seems so organized. Like, I'm going to work on this today. I'm going to take that off and work on that. But like you said, stuff comes up and then you're like, wait, let me close that back and I'll work on whatever something got thrown at me. That's just really brilliant. So, uh, thanks. <laughs> It really is just like it really is just about management because it can't it can get overwhelming. Um, and you know, it's a lot when you're like, you know, managing a bunch of different things, you just you you figure out coping mechanisms for dealing with all of the various things. So these are all of my, you know, like all of my coping <laughs> mechanisms for all of my all of my stuff yeah. um but i love it in here i love my office i yeah. hang out in here a lot it's wonderful um, oh it's look look who has joined us in the in the chair oh, it's Hi. Hi. i love Hi. how he matches the furniture his you know i know right <laughs> yeah well honestly at this point this is more barkley's office than my office because like <laughs> he he's sort of in charge of there. everything in here oh, i just he allows me to be in here to work um you know we fight for the chair he wins it's a, it's a good working relationship <laughs> yes well i have a couple of questions it's, it's based really on what you showed us <laughs> yeah um, i have a couple of questions based on what you showed us just like diane i was wondering um about your organization have you always been this organized as a writer or has it evolved into something like that's just a well-oiled machine um i I, you know, I think it evolved as I evolved as a writer, okay. um, because when I was a new writer, I didn't have this many projects. Um, you know, I was working on, I was working on one thing at a time. I was doing other full-time work. So I was working, I was a classroom teacher. Um, I taught mostly second grade um, for a long time. Um, while, you know, writing in, uh, you know, in the evening, I was an editor. Um, while, you know, riding on the, on the bus, <laughs> um, or, you know, like doing work on the bus or, um, uh, I did curriculum design. So, you know, like, you know, so at some point I was only working on like a couple of projects at a time. Um, and then as I started writing full time and I started adding projects to things, because the thing is, when you're a writer, you can't work on just one project from the beginning until the end mm. because it takes a really long time for a book to be published. So I have the, this book is finished, the, the art is finished, the, the text is finished and everything, right? But this book doesn't come out until next April, okay. which means that 
I'm not going to stop working on things while this is happening. Uh, right. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it becomes necessary to work on different things at a time. So you hand in a manuscript. I'm going to show you. Um, so here is one of my binders that I use for when I'm writing. So here's the binder. And inside the binder is the manuscript, right? And so you'll see that. Let me see. Let me go to a page that has some edits in it, right? So the, it goes through a few stages. I write it. I print it out. I go through. I will um, hand edit it. Um, and after I finish with all of that, I send a nice clean version to my editor. She might have it for two or three months. Well, I'm not going to sit at my desk, you know, twiddling my thumbs, waiting for her to finish that. While she's doing that, I'm going to start working on something else. And it might be that I'm starting something brand new and I'm starting to longhand write it in my notebook. Oh, wow. Which is like a wow. brand new. Old school. Um, yeah, uh, like mm -hmm. this one is, you know, like full of notes. Um, mm -hmm. And this is the same. This is the, this is the same project as this, and, and also the same project that's on the wall. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Um, so I'm, you know, I'll go through different stages. So at different points, I will be working on projects <clears throat> in different stages of production, and I might have something where. Um, like African icons is going to be soon coming out in paperback. So I might have to do some work on the paperback version that's different from what's in the hardcover version. And that's why I have that chart with all of the various projects and what stage they're in. Um, because from one day to the next, I might have different things to do on like different projects. Um, and, and so that that's why. And I think as I started adding in projects, that's when I started realizing, oh, I need to organize this in some kind of way. And because I'm very visual, it made more sense to me to have something up on the wall in that way. Like other people have charts on their computer or mm -hmm. they might have it in a notebook or something like that. But for me, it really helps to like walk into my office see this is the thing that I'm working on, like take the label off. Okay, that's the project that I'm working on. It's up on the wall. Here we go. Um, and I think that just, it, it just kind of naturally happened as I started adding more and more projects to, um, to my workload. Wow. Um, I have another question based on that. Um, how do you know when you have too many projects? Like what, what's your... <laughs> max that you can like juggle at one time when yeah. do you say no <laughs> what's your bandwidth uh, yeah. yes that is a problem <laughs> i have not yet learned to say no to projects i uh, actually literally just before this happened somebody asked me to join a project and i okay. i immediately said yes because of like who it's with right and she even she even prefaced it with I know you have a lot going on, so it's okay if you say no. And I said, oh, no, you're doing it? Yes, I will do it. So <laughs> you know, you might notice that there's no room on my chart for a yes. traditional project. I was wondering, like, does so, the chart just so get right bigger now, or is that the size? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. I At this point, my hope is that one of the other projects will end before this project okay. begins. Fingers okay. crossed. <laughs> So that I don't have to like add like a little you don't line, want to keep but I'm very paper. very close to the end of something. Okay. Yeah, I may have to add paper. Um, but it's you know they're right here. It's like I have I have the I have the paper here. Oh, so wow. like I'm ready to go. You know, like, it's not it's not, it's not one that. in one out. It's just like <laughs> it's yeah. Okay. Um, but I I am kind of hoping that yes that by the time this one gets going, that I will be at the end of something else. Because I, I did I, I did actually look at the chart when I got the email and I was just like, oh, I have two products that are like super close to the end. Um, so I, I can say yes to to something else. Um, yeah. So, sure. but you know, I, mm -hmm. I, I definitely have not learned to say no. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, but you get you get hard. your work done. <laughs> you get your work done because you're so organized. So, mm -hmm. but it, we can see that right. you stay busy. But also, yeah, there are days though where it's like there's like so many things. There's so many emails about like so many different things, and like people will have to send me reminders because I'll be like, mm -hmm. right, yes, it's on my list of things to do. I just haven't gotten to it yet. Like that's a real thing that happens where I'm just like. Ugh. But I also like have things like, you know, like sticky notes, like everywhere that will remind me it's like, okay, you need to do this thing today. But I also I do have, the like, same thing. They're all over. Yep. Yep. I, have, <laughs> I, I have a bullet journal that like every day I go oh. to and I'm just like, okay, these are the things I need to get done uh -huh. today. And that's in here. That's yeah. like we're so you know, twins. So do stuff. I. Oh, wow. Yay! <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I, I mean, I do have like a lot of organizational tools, but mm -hmm. it's because I need it. Like, I really, really need those tools. And, um, but yes, I, I did develop those tools like as I, as I developed in my writing career. You know, mm -hmm. I just started adding more things that made sense um so that i could you know try to you know do all of the things without losing my sanity <laughs> yes. absolutely right. <laughs> well let's um take it back to jumbies and we can start with our questions diane if you want um i'll go sure. first so the first question i had about the jumbies and i think you could tell by now that i'm admittedly someone who scares very easily and so i found the jumbies to be scary for me, but not so scary that I was going to stop reading it. Like I wanted to know what happened next. So the question I had in regards to that was like, were you holding back and how scary you could have made it? Um, not really. Um, I think okay. it is exactly as scary as I wanted it to be. The thing that I okay. was conscious of as I was working on it was that I wanted to make sure that there was enough of a balance between how scary it got mm -hmm. um, and like how much heart and humor that there was in it as well. So like we would always get to this point of like something super, super scary. And then I would mm -hmm. move immediately into something that was like about friendship or about family or I would have Buki and Malik come in with something really funny. Um, so I was always doing that. Like I was always walking that line of, okay. oh, it's, you know, like it, we're ramping up on scary stuff. Let's, let's cut to something. Um, let's cut to something funny. Let's cut to something um, that's about, you know, like Drew and Corinne's friendship or Drew's friendship with Pierre, her dad, mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, like move on there. So but it was, it's definitely something I was thinking about the whole time, but it, it is definitely as scary as I wanted it to be. I okay. did not want it to be any scarier than it is. And then, um, just a comment on Rise of the Jumbies, because I started that one and that one doesn't seem to be as scary. So that one's more, that one kind of reads more That's like- book two. Yeah, that book two, uh-huh. Yeah, it is, I mean, it's more of a, um, how would I describe it? There's more of a sort of global looming uh -huh. kind of horror. So it, so the, the, sure. the tone of it is a little bit different, right? Definitely. So there's, I think with the first Jumbie book, there's much more kind of like immediate danger, um, you know, things like really happening in the moment. But with Rise of the Jumbies, it becomes a little bit more of a cerebral kind of horror that's, that's mm -hmm. happening that you have to like really think about. It's not as immediate. So you probably don't feel like it is the same level of scariness. It's just for me, it's like the same kind of amount of scariness, but it's a different kind of scariness. Makes sense. Um, so that that was yeah. the difference to me. Like, yeah. you know, it was it was not a matter of how scary it was, but it was the quality of the scare was a little bit different. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, of the series, like people ask me all the time, like, which of the series is my favorite? The second one is 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 definitely my favorite um, yeah. because, you know, mermaids and underwater. Yeah. And I like I love that. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So this kind of ties into what you just said. Was the Jumbies always meant to be a series or did you find out after the first one was published that, yo, oh, I'm gonna do a second one. And how did it come about? You had it in your mind like mm -hmm. mermaids, 
No. Well, okay. So it, it's, yeah, the answer to that is yes and no. I had the idea um, when I wrote the first one that I wanted to do a series where one book takes place mostly on in the land, one place takes place mostly in the water, one takes place sort of like in the, in the sky, in the air. Oh. But when it was sold, um, first of all, nobody wanted this book right? Like this was a very hard sell. Hmm. Um, it took a very, very long time to get this book, you know, to, for this book to find its publisher. And um, fortunately, Elise Howard um, at Algonquin really loved it right away. Um, and she she actually bought it very quickly once, once she saw it. But it, it, you know, it took a really long time um, and also because it it's focused on Caribbean mythology, nobody knew exactly how that was going to land. So it was sold as a one book deal. And I thought, okay, well, it'll just be one book. That's okay. You know, fine. Um, the book sold so well the first month that we immediately started having conversations about, you know, possibly doing a second one. And I said, okay, well, you know, I had this, I, I didn't, because I put everything into the, the first one thinking that it was going to just be one book, I sort of, you know, forgot the idea of, you know, the, the, the water and the air. I, I really just mm -hmm. kind of eliminated that and I put as much as I could into this, this first one, just believing that there was not going to be another. Um, and then they were like, no, let's, let's do a second one. So I was like, <laughs> do you want three? Do we want to do, you know, three books? Nope. We only want to do one more. So it's like, okay. Mm -hmm. So it's like, all right, so this is my shop, right? So I'm, I'm putting absolutely everything that I could possibly put into this second book because this is it. There's not going to be a book three. It's going to end at two. It's just going to be a duology. No problem. I gave everything I had um, for book two. Before book two even came out, I got a phone call from my editor. <laughs> I remember I was in Trinidad with the kids. So like we typically like go to Trinidad and spend the summer in Trinidad. I was in Trinidad with my kids and I got a phone call from Elise and she said, you know, I know the second book isn't out yet, but like a lot of people are talking about it being a trilogy. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> <You're killing me. laughs> and she said, you know, can we can we do a third book? And I was like, I gave you everything I had. Like I had nothing. I had nothing. I put everything that I had into that second book because I thought this is it, you yeah. know? Um and it happened to be um the summer that Oh my goodness, I can't remember which hurricane it was. I think it was Hurricane Maria. It was just devastating the Caribbean. Mm, mm, and mm. we came back to New Jersey like just before a lot of those hurricanes um, were hitting, but we were really paying attention. My husband is also from Trinidad. Um, so we were really paying attention to what was going on. We have family members like in other Caribbean countries and, um, and stuff like that. And so we were like glued to the Weather Channel. And the Weather Channel was covering everything and in between the segments they had these little um one page things that came up that was like a fact and one of the facts said that huracan is the carib god of storms and i remembered this from when i was a kid because of course um the caribs are the indigenous peoples in, uh, like throughout the caribbean but you know in trinidad I knew people who, um, you know, had descended from the the Caribs and and the Arawaks, um, and I hadn't. I knew the word huracan, and of course, huracan is where we get the word hurricane. And I thought that's it. That's my air. That's my in to, to <laughs> book three with the air, and that was it. And then and then I I went to my wall, and I went to my wall, and I went to my <laughs> sticky notes, and I just started like writing stuff down. I put it on my little chart. And it was it was a go, and so that's how we wow. figured out um, the three book series. But yeah, it was never meant to be three books. It it really wow. was like one book, and then one more <laughs> book, and then one more book. <laughs> 
Well, <laughs> go, uh, Diane, go. Is that, is that your, or is it my turn? Because I have, I have more questions. Um, I had a, is I it, think I'm, it's a spoiler, spoiler alert. Yeah. Knowing what yeah. we know, why did Kareen's father tell her there was no such thing as jumbies? Do you think he was just trying to protect her or do you truly not believe in them? Did he truly not believe in them? Well, um, I think that he was trying not to believe. I think he was in denial. <laughs> to be mm. honest, mm. I, I think he he kind of knew that it was true um, and was, you know, like did not want to really believe it for himself. But I think also he was trying to protect her um, from what, I, you know, I think he he knew that it was coming, you know, like, you know, once you, you get into this, you know, I, you find out in book one, but once you get into book one, you find out like, you know, what exactly Corinne's connection to the Jumbies are. And I, I think he was trying to protect her from that. And I think that's why he said it. But also, you know, that's what I, I, I grew up with this sort of, this duality of thought where people would say, oh, this person like walking down the street could be a Jumbie. And then people would be like, ha ha ha, Jumbies aren't real. Mm -hmm. So like, I, I grew up with that. It's like, are they real? They're not real. <laughs> they're all real. Yeah, no, they're not real. Yes, they're real. <laughs> like, that was my whole. That was my whole life. Okay. Yeah, I get it. Because mm -hmm. she does that in the book. She's like, "Wait, is it what? Huh? Yeah. Like, um, what? Well, I don't get it. Yeah, that was totally me. <laughs> well, with that, then I know you won't. Your three books, picture book. But any possibility we can get an adult novel about Pierre and Corinne's mom and how they met? Because I want to know that story. That'd be really good. Get that yeah. on the wall. Um, get that on the well, wall. <laughs> well, oh. <gasps> well, is it here? Uh -huh. Let me see. Hold on. I have, yeah, okay. So <gasps> this, this is, um, this is like a horror, <laughs> this is a horror anthology <laughs> for adults. And in this, mm -hmm. I have a short story that is about um, a sukuya. Mm. And uh, no, I'm sorry, no, it's a Laja Bless. Um, the one, like the Laja Bless are the one that have like one foot that's like a cow's hoof. So they're kind of like satyrs in that way where like their yeah. lower half is like, you know, Jumbi, the rest of them looks like regular person. Um, and so a lot, of, there has been a lot of interest in this little story. Um, and this of course was, you know, this is, this is not for children. This was, <laughs> this was definitely for grownups. Um, so we are, and by we, I mean like me and, um, a, a particular producer that I, I work with and have worked with on various projects. Um, we're actually looking to develop an adult um, jumpy story. So that is something that I am working on. Mm -hmm. It might not be Nicole and Pierre. Um, mm -hmm. uh, it, it might be somebody else entirely, but I have, I, I kind of have been asked about mm -hmm. doing Nicole and Pierre um, so much so that actually Mermaid and Pirate was supposed to be Nicole and Pierre's story. Uh -huh. That's who I thought and of then, when you said that. I was like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. Mermaid and Pirate was actually supposed to be Nicole and Pierre's story. Okay. And and then it turned into something else um, because mm -hmm. I had like this, this great idea for something else entirely. Um, so yeah, I, there there for sure has been a lot of interest in in Nicole and Pierre as a um as a as uh, as a romance in another genre. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we'll, I mean, we'll see. And and the thing is like, you know, I have thought about it. My mom, um, who I listen to very, very much, <laughs> has <laughs> has also specifically requested a Nicole and Pierre story. Um, so you are not alone in okay. that. Mama knows, mama you know? knows. So <laughs> yeah, it, it might happen. It, it's, cool. it's, a, it's for sure a possibility. Dedicated to mom and in need. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and other people. Okay. Um, so... What jumbie would you most not want to run into in the forest? 
What jumbie do I not want to write? Yeah, like what's the scariest jumbie to you? The type of jumbie? Because you have all these different types in the book. There are a lot of different types. Mm -hmm. um, let me see. Like, <laughs> there's, uh, you know, I don't know. Like, uh, there's some jumbies that I haven't even, like, gotten to yet. Mm. Like, in the sort of pantheon of, of jumbies. Like, I haven't gotten around to doing... Um, a lot of different ones, like the Masakura Man, for example. Um, you know, I am super, super interested in like exploring all of them in like a, a lot of different ways. The, the the book that I'm working on right now, the one that I showed you earlier, that's on the wall, that's in this um, binder and the handwritten one is yet another Jumbi story that that's like a whole other kind of jumbie, moko jumbies, mm -hmm. um, which are not as scary as the other jumbie kind. Um, but I, I keep like, you know, it's funny, like I keep coming back to them, <laughs> you know, like I keep coming back to these stories, wanting to explore more, wanting to find out more about them. I'm just kind of really fascinated by my own mythology. I'm really interested in Caribbean mythology Mm -hmm. um, so I find like I'm always looking to explore more. Um, I think I will always probably have a place for writing more of these kinds of stories, like in different ways, like exploring them in different ways. Um, yeah, I don't know if that answers. <laughs> I want, okay. I, I want to know which which jumbie keeps you awake at night because it's so scary. Because they most of them scared. Me. Oh wait, I'm, oh. you're cutting out, so I'm not hearing. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Or Dan, if you want to take. Oh this. yeah, she was saying. No, oh, which I one? Hear that. I, I'm like. Can you hear me? Can you hear? Or is just Anita? Both of us. It's. Do you want to put it in the chat? Oh maybe? yeah. Because like I feel like it's Deep not. Maybe put it in. Um, or maybe yeah, in the private chat. Yeah, it's breaking up a lot, so I'm I'm getting some distortion. It could be it's so hot out here in California that. <laughs> oh, the jumbie that scares me the most. Um, Mama Chalo. Mama Chalo scares me the most. Um, the, she's on the cover of Rise of the Jumbies um, because she'll just kill you. Like, she, <laughs> she doesn't care. She doesn't she wait. She will just be like, yeah, she'll like, she's just like, oh, you're in my water and I don't want you here. Goodbye. Your toast, and that's it. <laughs> Which is like my favorite. I love that so much. Well, this kind of ties. But to yes, she's the scariest one, <laughs> despite that. The mama. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so can you hear us now or not? If not, Steve can put the question in the chat in our private chat. Um, Anita, I think you had this one too. It was because it ties into this. Oh, what are some strategies for kids to stay safe if they ever suspected someone? they might know might be a jumpy. How do you stay safe? Well, you can't uh, stay safe from jumbies. mama. <laughs> Not from mama Joe, but yeah. <laughs> there are like a lot of different ways that you can, um, You there are a lot of different ways that you can, um, and there's different methods for like different jumbies, right? Um, that you can do to, to stay safe. So, so for example, with Mama Chlo, um, there's nothing you can do if she sees you and she decides you're toast, like you're just toast. But if you see her first and you're looking to like, you know, sneak away, which is a wise thing to do with Mama Chlo, what you do is you take off your, your shoe, you turn it upside down, put it down on the ground and like walk backwards all the way to your house. You're like back up all the way to your house. I think the reasoning there is that she doesn't have legs. She doesn't have feet. So she's like fascinated by shoes. And so she'll be fascinated by the shoe and be distracted by it. Um, with the Sukuya, the Sukuya is like a Caribbean vampire. And vampires are like vampires from all over the world. Doesn't matter what culture, um, vampires are obsessed with counting. So if you mm. guys know Count on Count from Sesame Street, he's oh. obsessed with counting, right? Like he walks into a room, he's got to count all the things. Um, so Caribbean vampires, uh, Sukuya, also obsessed with counting. So what you do to like stop them from coming into your house, you take like a really big bag of rice, you pour it out in front of your front door 
And so when they come to your house, they're going to be like, oh my God, I got to count all the rice. <laughs> they're like, start uh -huh. counting the rice like one by one. And you have like a big enough bag, like it'll take them all night. What happens to vampires <laughs> in the when the sun comes up? Well, they got to kick it back up. Um, they, I mean, there's all different kinds of things. That could that be a whole book. To, like, keep your That's what I'm thinking, Diane. Yeah. That's another book. Yeah. It is. Um, so I actually did a field guide um, that's about various zombies and about the things that you can do to keep yourself safe oh. from them. Um, and that is on my website, which is tracybatiz.com. Um, and it's in, I think, like in the teacher information because like a lot of teachers use it. But I also, I also come to schools either virtually or in person. And I do like a whole Jumbie defense class. So I can like, we do like a whole thing where I, I talk about each of the Jumbies and we do like a whole like improv dress up session mm -hmm. where one kid gets to be a Jumbie and another kid gets to be the victim. <laughs> and I teach <laughs> the victim like how to defend themselves against the Jumbie so that they don't, you know, die. <laughs> <laughs> kids really love it. We have a good time. Um, That's like, great. Who doesn't, who doesn't love it? That is cool. Right? That could be a and whole, dress uh, up because I bring costumes. Mm -hmm. oh, I, Anita, I think that could, <laughs> need to do a program. That'd be so yeah, cool. that sounds like a really good program. I need to, I need to yeah. learn more about the jumpy so that I, we can do a program like yeah, that. Could be the, um, yeah. The so experts. we're almost out of time. So if there's any any more questions you want to ask Diane, and then we can wrap this up. No, or if there's I think anything I mean, else you want to tell was, us. We had some great ones. Yeah. <laughs> about you know advice you list. can give people when they want to become authors um no, but i know there's no. some in the there are some in the chat in the comments um and then you know what well you've told us what you're working on next so um that you're working on a bunch of stuff next i'm seeing a lot of hellos in the chat hi yeah. hi <laughs> um uh, and then you talked about there's going to be a third jumbies that's great um, and if anyone wants a copy of this one, make sure to email us and we can try to have an opportunity to win the first one in the series. Um, Yay! and then the library has all of other Tracy's books, so you could check them out. Um, so yeah, do we want to do, I don't know if she'll be able to hear us. Can you hear us Tracy anymore? Or I don't know if we can do our rapid yeah, can you fire. Hear us? Oh yeah. Let's do rapid fire. Yeah. Let's do rapid fire. Oh, she can't hear us. Okay, so yeah. rapid fire. Okay. Yeah, just we'll, put the we'll question in the chat because my audience yeah, will put it in a lot. Okay. We'll, we'll try to do this rapid we'll fire. Doing yeah. rapid yeah. fire. Okay. okay, here we go. Coffee or tea? Do you tea. prefer coffee or tea? I do not drink coffee. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Ebook or physical book? Physical book. Okay. Well, we do have your books and ebooks, by the way, to everyone right. who's watching. Um, gum or Ooh, breath gum mints? Or breath mints. I'm gonna say breath mints. Um, my dad, like, we, I grew up with like a bias against gum because my dad like hated gum uh, mm. for whatever reason. So we would only get gum when we were going on planes so that we could like our ears could pop. So that's the only that's the only time I ever think about getting gum. So breath mints <laughs> for sure. I'm like that too. Right. <laughs> Um, are you a night owl or an early bird? I am an early bird. Um, I conk out at like 10 o'clock at night. I'm toast. <laughs> I'm toast at like 10 o'clock. But Barkley and I do like, we do like early yoga and then mm -hmm. go for like a two mile walk in the morning. Um, so we do that before, a lot of times before anybody else is up in the house. Mm -hmm. Like we're up, we're out. Sun's up, we're up. Do, 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 yes. do. You know. My kind of person. But you do it without yeah. coffee. <laughs> <laughs> she has tea. <laughs> okay, bath or shower? Huh. Um, can I say both? <laughs> can I choose both? It, like, you know, like shower, yes, because like after your workout, you want to shower. Um, but sometimes you need to just like sit in the bath and like, you know, stew. <laughs> You can like make yourself into a tea, <laughs> like be a tea in your own bathtub. Okay. Get depressed from all the junkies. Um, yes. 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 Get wrinkly like the kids in the water. Um, okay. Last one. Text yeah. or phone call? 
Oh, text, prefer please. text oh my call. gosh. <laughs> text, please, please. <laughs> I, I'm, I am very, like, people don't believe that I'm an introvert because, like, I do stuff like this and I seem, like, very, like, outgoing and whatnot. But I am, I am not. I am, I am super, super an introvert. Um, please text me or email. <laughs> email is even better because, like, email feels less immediate, and I don't feel yes. any pressure to like respond to emails like right as I get them. But a text message, I'll be like, oh god, I gotta answer. Um, but text <laughs> for sure. <laughs> we are very similar, Tracy. <laughs> very, very similar. <laughs> oh gosh. Thank you so much for spending all this time with us today and giving us a chance to really get to know you um, so well. Uh, I think that I know you've got to run off because you've got mom duties. Um, so we'll go ahead and, and conclude our program. Um, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, where am I at? Thank you all for joining us today. And we hope that you enjoyed this conversation with author Tracy Batiste. Remember to visit lapl.org slash event to see more of our amazing programs. And our next Your Author um, your author program is set for July 22nd at 4 p.m. when the Los Angeles Public Library is proud to present author Tyler Fetter, who will be discussing her young adult graphic novel memoir, Dancing at the Pity Party, which deals with the premature death of Tyler's super cool mom. This acclaimed graphic novel has been called cathartic and uplifting as the author works through the process of grieving as well as being able to move forward. Also, make sure that you are signed up for our summer reading challenge by visiting lepl.org slash summer. And as always, those attending this virtual program will have an opportunity to win a free book. So it's until scary. next time, we truly appreciate all your support. The success of all of our library programs could not happen without viewers like you. So thank you. <laughs>